Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. A little bit of a different video for you. A couple weeks ago, we tried to stream a Genesis gameplay uh, with Assad, the creator of Genesis Battle of the Champions, and uh, we ran into some troubles with Tabletop Simulator. They were going through an update at the time, so we weren't able to stream that video, uh, but today we have recorded a video and put it together for you. This is us playing Genesis Battle of Champions. It's me learning how to play. Uh, it's been like two months since I played the game, so I don't really remember anything. Learning how to play with the creator of the game super excited about it um, we actually had a few bundles returned uh, we had a few extra we had bought some extra boxes so uh, if you're interested in this product go to my website at captainsmarket.com uh, this is a, a promo between George and I uh, we actually have a promo card that's pretty cool it's uh it's George and I wrapped up into one hero he's got a Hawaiian shirt and a, uh, a backwards hat. So there was a few bundles that were, uh, you know, weren't returned or were returned or whatever and shipped to send or whatever. So uh, if people are interested in that, we do have some bundles available. That link will be in the comment section of this video. And uh, without further ado, this is us learning how to play Genesis Battle of Champions. Hope you enjoy it. Go with purple, you can go with yellow. Okay. All right. All right. Keep in mind, my tabletop simulator abilities are very poor, so uh, you'll have to I'll walk. Me, you'll I'll have you'll have to walk me through a few things. I'll do my best. And I those of you who are watching the video, just be patient. It'll be all right. Asad, <laughs> uh, do you want to you want to say anything to everybody who's watching? Uh, welcome. <laughs> I'm excited that we're finally doing this after so long. It's been a, uh, yeah, it's been in the <laughs> works for a long time. We were supposed to do this before the package came out. Yeah. Uh, but then the package came out. You sold out. You got the promos. Those all got distributed. Uh, it's crazy times. Crazy times. Yeah, it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to finally uh, be able to put this video out there and show so many of the amazing people in your community just how the game works. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. Uh, I I've, I played uh, a few times. It's been a, it's been about a month or two since I've played, so I'm, I'm rusty, but um i'm excited to relearn and to learn it from somebody who actually knows how to play rather than me like watching a video and teaching somebody even though i didn't know how to play so i'm excited man i've been uh really looking forward to it all right let me um just double check what's going on here so what we're playing with i'm just going to go over the base kind of demo decks okay. that a lot of players play with because we're just going to get into the mechanics of the game uh maybe some other time we can go over more of the like meta decks and things like that but yeah. for now we're just gonna show how the game works cool so uh big thing about genesis since uh our big focus was getting the players out from behind the hand and playing as a character on the board uh so similar to you know flesh and blood or the War a warcraft card game or anything like that you have a hero you pick your character and you build around them so for this demo, we got two characters to choose from. You have Raha the Archer, who's... And if you as you hover over a card, if you want to see them in more detail, just hold Alt as you're hovering over the card. Cool. Yeah, there you go. And you can use the wheel on your mouse. Yeah. Too. You can, like, <laughs> Look there at you that. go, there you go. No wonder people use so, this, what, this thing. <laughs> Raha is your Archer. She has a lot more tactical play style. She's going to be a lot more strategic. She's a little bit more squishy. Uh, lower health, but she definitely has a lot more, a lot of power behind that. Okay. And then the other character we're playing with is Malik, who's your barbarian, your berserker. He has a lot of health, hits for a lot, just wants to run in and charge in and do as much damage as possible. I'm going to play that one. Yeah. All right. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm just going to take Graha, bring her to the other side of the board. I know what I'm good at. This one doesn't <laughs> seem like it needs much, much brain power. <laughs> All right. So let's go over your character stats. So if you want to enlarge the character, uh, you got the three banners in the top left corner. That is going to be your unique stats for your character. The first banner is your starting health. So that's how much health you start the game with, not necessarily like your maximum, right? So mm -hmm. if you play ability that goes over that, you're allowed to go over it. So that's your starting health. The second number is your starting aura. Aura is your currency in the game. It's used to do magical abilities like create creatures, cast spells, alter the arena. Uh, anything that's magical, you're going to be spending aura. Your third uh, stat there is your energy resistance. So okay. some abilities that are physical, like throwing a punch, jumping over things, these are going to require you to pay energy, which is done by 
discarding cards off the top of your deck. Okay. But Malik, because he's a fighter, he has a tolerance doing these physical things. He reduced all energy costs by one. Makes sense. All right. Moving on to the character, you got this grid in the top center of the card. That's your awareness grid. The white I love arrow this. Is... This is my favorite part of Genesis. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of the things that makes the game the most uni unique, right? Yeah. Uh, because everything you play is bounded by distance and direction. So that white arrow is the spot you're on and the direction you're facing. And the red dot is your awareness. Okay. So that's going to tie into your two abilities at the bottom. Every ability is written the same way. In the black box, you got the speed. So see the swift or action. Uh, the center is the name of the ability. So for Malik, you have basic attack two and heavy attack four. And then the white box is the cost for that ability. And then underneath it is your reminder text in case you don't remember what the ability does. Okay, so uh, swift basic attack two, that's just exert. I assume that's like the equivalent of like tapping or uh, like it, you basically have one per turn and then you can heavy attack and it costs you two life in additional to tapping. Really? Cool. So swift or fast abilities can be done during your turn or your opponent's turn or response to anything. Actions or slower abilities can only be done during your main phase. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, most of the cards are going to be relatively self-explanatory. I know you play a lot of TCGs, so uh, I won't go through every single card, but I do want to go over creatures and how those work. So right here, we have an Inferno Ghoul. Uh, every creature has a Beckon ability, and that's how you're getting them from your hand onto the board. So it's action speed, Beckon, six aura. So you pay six of your 80 aura, and then you place this creature on a spot adjacent to you, which are the four orthogonal squares. So left, right, in front of you or behind you, facing the same direction as you. So if you're facing, if Malik's facing this way, it comes out facing that way. If Malik rotates this way, then it's coming out facing that direction. Okay. And then it comes out exerted. So it can't do anything the turn it comes out. Okay. And every beckon ability like that. But once it hits the arena, it becomes its own separate entity from you. It cannot play cards from your hand. It cannot use your resources in any way. Uh, it will even get its own turn that's independent from your turn. Okay, I uh, was I was zoomed in on the card. Uh, adjacent to you is not diagonal, right? It's just the four. Correct. Cool, just double yeah. checking. Yeah. All right, so everything else is going to be hopefully relatively self-explanatory. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, but we'll... Let's do well, it. Well, let me ask you right now. Do you have any questions before we jump into it? I don't think so. I'm ready. I think I'm ready to... I'm sure we'll right. learn about initiative and turn order and all that stuff as we're playing. Yeah. So like a, a classic uh, fight, you're going to start off squared off against each other. And I have th 30 yeah. life, right? Yes. Oh, look at these little counters. That's pretty cool. All yeah. right. So you start out with your and hero then, right there in the middle. Yeah. Middle. And then you have your health. And then you have your starting aura. So you're starting off with 80 aura. And gotcha. these are actually, you can just type into these. As yeah, well. I figured I could once I started, but then I <laughs> liked hitting the button. Uh, all right, <laughs> this is my deck. How do I shuffle this? So there's two ways. Uh, I think the fastest is just hover over it and hit R. The other is, yep, pick it up and start shaking it around. I love like Tabletop Simulator. Every time I use it, it's so much fun. I only use it like once a month, but I love it. All right, cool. Oh, right, I, so I reset my aura somehow. Uh... Okay, so I'm going to get some dice for you. So a cool thing about this is you have these infinity bags. Once you put an item in them, you have infinity, infinite copies of them. Cool. So those are the little white token are going to be your exert tokens. And then the dice, just dice. Cool. All right. So I'm going to bring this onto the table. This is a little cheat sheet of how the entire game plays. Okay. So the game plays with a series of rounds and turns. Uh... A round ends once every character is exerted, and it starts by taking off exert tokens and drawing a card. Makes sense. Uh, rounds are universal, and it impacts everyone. Turns are individual. Gotcha. That's cool. So, so it plays a little bit like a board game in that way, right? Like you, yeah. And you, that's what these tokens right here are for to say, hey, I, this guy has gone, and now it's the next person's turn. Exactly. Exactly. So going through the turn orders, every turn has three phases, move, main, and end. Move is your opportunity to navigate through the board. Your main phase, like any other game, you can play as many things as you want, as long as you have the resources for them. Uh, and then your end phase, 
you can play any swift speed abilities as you want, as long as you have the resources for it. And at the end of your end phase, you become exerted. Gotcha. So if you didn't do an ability that exerts you during your turn, then at the end of your turn, you'll become exerted no matter what. Cool. So let's, uh, you shuffled your deck. I'm just going to shuffle mine. We're going to start the game off by drawing five cards. So just hover over your deck and hit the number five on your keyboard. And that's going to draw you, draw you five cards. Oh, cool. Okay, hold on. I got to get my screen better because <laughs> it's down below. Oh, never mind. It's right there. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. Cool. So since this is your first game, I'll be the starting champion, but normally you roll a dice to see who the starting champion is. Okay. Uh, so the starting champion, their team gets the first turn of every single round. Okay. Uh, this is going to sound kind of crazy because mo like, anyways, uh, we can get into that some other time, but there is a lot of value to going second in the game. Right. Anyway, so going first, I'm in my move phase. During my move phase, uh, if you go back to that cheat sheet that we had over here, uh, you can either stay where you are and go directly into your main phase, or you can choose this move and or rotate. Okay. So moving is going to one of those four adjacent squares and rotating is 90 degrees. So you can move, stay where you are and rotate 90 degrees. You can move forward one square or you can move forward and rotate 90. And you don't just have to go in the direction you're facing. You can go to the left or the right as you want. Okay, but if you go to the left or right, you stay facing the, the way that you were. But you think, no, then, so then you, you can rotate. You can move yeah, you move to the square, and then you choose if you want to rotate or not. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to start by just going forward one spot. After you move, you can now choose to move a second time. So kind of like in an RPG, you can either dash or start doing some slower action speed abilities. So I'm going to move the once, and now go into my main phase. Okay. I'm going to bring up creature. All right, so I'm going to start off in my main phase, beckoning out this Rajeshi Lion. It costs 15 aura. So I'm at 95. That takes me down to 80. Okay. So that's how that, you start off with resources. That's cool. Yes. So this is a game of starting off strong and then struggling later. When you're cool. getting to the end of the game, that's when you're just like throwing punches. Yeah. But at the beginning of the game, this is when you bring out your creatures to fight. Gotcha. So this comes out exerted. So I drop an exert token on it. And then it's still my main phase. I can still play other things. So I'm going to bring out this fire cup. It costs six more aura, bringing me down to 74. Not 741, 74. And then that comes out exerted as well. Okay. Now I go, there's nothing more I want to do during my main phase. So I go to my end phase. There's no swift abilities I want to play here. So I just end my turn by exerting myself. Cool. And then it goes over to your turn. All right. So to refresh here, in order to attack you, I would have to be like right in front of you, right? That's the end. Yeah. Okay. Base to base. Formula. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move because that's the first thing I do. Okay. I, I'm I'm going to go for you because that's what I think I'm okay. supposed to do. Uh, yeah. And then move or rotate again. If I move, then I can't do another action. That's going to put me in range to get hit by you. Yeah. Is that the... Uh, but if so, I... Is, yeah. there, is there a line of sight in this game? Uh, no, so my awareness are all four of these squares. When I go to attack, I can choose any target in one of those four squares and attack them for two. Gotcha. Okay, so there's no, like, all right. So let me read my cards here. So uh, lots of damage. What are Inferno Pits? So now... I can I can see your hand just because you're sharing your screen. Do you want me to help you like walk through 100, it a little bit? A hundred percent, yeah. All right. So, uh, you got Gray Wolf. This is a summon. It has three attack, one health. Okay. Uh, and so the health for the creatures are in the top left corner where the red banner is, just yeah. like the champion. And then it has this attack there. Um, and then you had your Behemoth, which has five health, five attack. Okay. And then, uh. You got Leap. Leap is a physical ability, like I was talking okay. about before. Yeah. You see how in its cost, there's that little flame and a three? That right. means you would actually... you To pay that cost, you're discarding three cards off the top of your deck. But since you're a fighter, 
you resist one of that, so you're only discarding two cards off the top of your deck. Okay. So if you were to play Leap, you would actually land in the spot right in front of me. And then I, I can then make an action, right? Correct. Okay. You, you'd yes. still be in your main phase, so you can just That's what I want to do. do. So I, I'm going to play All Leap, right. and right. I assume that that goes into Memories or Subconscious? Yep. That's your, goes All into right. your Memories. So that costs me two cards off the top of my deck, right? Yep. So to do that, I'm going to go... How do I discard from here? So it's uh, a quick drag off the top of your deck. One. Oops. Two. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. So I have paid for leap. So uh, yep. that moves me here. Yeah. And then did that have an attack? We just threw the card away. So it just moves you there. Uh, after you move, you can now choose to rotate from leap or not. That's what leap does. It moves you to that spot and then allows you to rotate. Yeah, I don't want to rotate because I want to be facing yeah. you, right? So now Correct. I'm going now, to... Before you attack, you're still in your main phase, meaning you can okay. still like, play creatures. So Death Eater is a really cool creature. It has its regular beckon cost. You, it costs three health to bring it out. But it has this ability death touch when it enters the arena it kills something that has three health or less okay so you can drop around that it what is around it around mean? It. is that uh is that next to you or do diagonals work oh it wouldn't matter okay yeah, yeah makes diagonals sense. work with it okay cool so i would want to beckon that so i'm going to lose three life to do that yeah uh, one two three let's see it doesn't have any blue so it doesn't cost me any blue so i'm going to put th that here so if you drop it there, it can only target the fire cup. If you drop it on the other side, it would be able to target the Rajishi Lion, which is a bigger creature. So the Rajishi oh, Lion okay. has three health. That has three health and that has one. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes way more sense. All right. So I would drop it there and then it would death eat the lion. And it's I'm yep. assuming it comes in and it has a token on it. Correct. Yeah. And now it's still your main phase. So if you want cool. to bring out another creature... Oh, let's explain Inferno Pit. So Inferno Pit is a terrain piece, essentially. Uh, you can create it onto any spot on the board where there isn't a champion or summon. That's, uh, so any spot that's unoccupied. That spot now oh. becomes Inferno Pit. It's kind and of like a trap. This, exactly. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> okay, cool. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, now, do I have... After I do an ability, I can't move again. So... Uh, all right. So... In terms of pits, putting something around your hero would be good, right? I assume. It would block me in. So if you were to drop it behind me, per se, or to my side, it means that those are two less spots that I can run from. And uh, you, also you, kinda, also... you also couldn't create something in those spots, right? I can, but when I create a creature onto the Infernal Pits, it will instantly take two damage. Gotcha. So I think without knowing any strategy in this game i'm going to spend six i think you spent health instead of aura there. oh yeah, yeah sorry one two three four four six i i read the the top left as the cost so it cost me 12 yeah. aura so set so that'd be 68 i'm gonna put a pit uh i might put a pit behind you so that you can't re retreat basically sounds good all right, and then uh, I can still do things. There's no minimum to what I'm doing. Nope. Do I you draw? Play. Do I draw cards at the end of my turn or something? So you'll draw one card at the beginning of each round. Okay. Uh, any strategy to how how this works? Uh, like, do most people play out their first hand? I usually want to play a little bit conservative because okay. you because you your opponent has all their resources at the beginning of the game. Uh, the bigger the creature, the easier they are to take out at the beginning of the game. Late game, they become really hard to take out. Yeah, so this thing seems like something that maybe is good to save for later because it's big. Uh, but this back end, I think I'll save both of them. Um, okay. So then I'm going to take my heavy attack. I'm going to exert and take two life. Yeah. And that's going and to swing four at you. So I don't have any responses that I want to play. So I'm just going to go down by four, going down to 18. Cool. And then it's so, it. Yep. 
everyone's exerted, so that indicates it's the oh, end yeah. of the round. It's so not the end of my turn, to... it's the end of the round. Yeah. Yes, correct. So we go to the next round by taking off all these counters and drawing a card. Cool. All right. So a few things to note here. One is turn order. So my team has two turns. It's Raha and Fire Cub. Your team has two turns, Death yeah. Eater and Malik. When we go to do our turns, you'll pick one unit. So either Malik or Death Eater and do a full turn with them until they become exerted. And then it goes over to your opponent. So since I'm the starting champion, I'll take the first turn. I'll pick one of my units. So just say I picked Fire Cub. Then you can go with Death Eater. Then I'll go with Raha. Then you go with Malik. Makes sense. All right. The second thing is that the game favors the defender. So what I mean by that is... Uh, Oh, I'm trying to uh, just let's pretend that the fire cub was here, mm -hmm. right? And I went to attack the Death Eater. The Death Eater, because it has a swift attack of three, it could actually respond with its attack. Gotcha. And then its attack would go higher on the stack. Uh, so the fire cub would be the first item on the stack. Then Death Eater would be on top of that. Death Eater's attack would resolve first, killing the fire cub, canceling the fire cub's attack altogether. Awesome. But uh, if Death Eater was already exerted, so just say it took its turn already and Fire Cub went to attack it, it couldn't attack back because it can't pay that exert cost anymore. Oh, that's really cool. So that makes it. a lot of dynamics on how you choose what goes first when it is your option. Yeah. That's cool. The other thing is if my Fire Cub found a way to attack the Death Eater from the side, since I'm now outside of the Death Eater's awareness, mm. it still couldn't attack me back. That's so cool. Even if it was unexpected. That movement side of this game is what made me re like really like the the whole idea. Um, I love board games, right. and if you mix TCGs with board games, <laughs> I'm all in. Um, yeah. All right. No, it's definitely uh, okay. Yeah. Let Let's do this. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with my fire cup. Uh, it's gonna go through its move phase to go here. So it's moving once and rotating. Then it's going to go to its main phase where it's going to do its fire attack too by exerting itself. Okay. And now it's up to you to choose if there's any responses you want to do. So any swift abilities that you would have in hand if you wanted to respond. And I, 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 don't I can't respond with Malik because I'm facing this way. Um, so you can't respond to Fire Cub, but if you wanted to, like I saw you drew the Shadow Claw, if you wanted to, you could just swing at me with that Shadow Claw in response to Fire Cub's attack. It does wouldn't hit the fire cup, it would hit me. Does that exert me? No, so Shadow Claw only costs the energy. Gotcha. So it's, it's oh, potentially yeah. not the best move here, but it's just one of those things that. No, I'm playing aggro. I'm playing aggro. I'm all, <laughs> all right, aggro, go baby. For it. All right, so I'm going to play Shadow Claw, which is going to go here. Uh, and it's going to cost me four, uh, three cards from the top of my deck to deal three dark damage to uh to raha and it just so everybody remembers it only cost me three that little thing says four but my guy's ability is one so it costs three less um so that's one two three so when you run out of cards in your deck i assume that's when you die too correct the two ways to lose are once your health hits zero or the moment your deck hits zero i love it Cool. So, so yeah. Shadow Claw is higher on the stack. Uh, so the I don't know if we actually need to visualize this, but I have no responses to Shadow Claw. I don't know if you have any responses. No, I assume no not. responses. Uh, so Shadow Claw resolves first, which will hit me for three. Yeah. And then Fire Cubs attack resolves, which hits you for two. Perfect. So I'm down to 15. You're down to 23. All right. Now it goes over to your team. So you can choose either Death Eater or Malik. Now, keep in so, mind, Death Eater is a separate unit from you. It cannot play cards from your hand. It cannot use your resources. It basically can just run around and attack things. Yeah. Um, all right. So it it can basically just attack for three is all it's doing. Uh, so I would um, I want to try to trap you in. So heavy attack four is going to do more damage than dark attack three so while malik's right here i feel like i should take the swing before you move here and then uh, i guess i could just follow you with malik so never mind i'm gonna death eater is gonna move here how do i rotate with this is it t oh. no uh it is q and e q and e so i'm gonna rotate and then now uh how do i make this thing go away 
what I do. Oh, I think you right clicked. Perfect. So you all right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Death Eater then is now facing up front, and so I'm going to dark attack you by exerting. So there's three damage. All right. So in response to your dark attack, does this make sense? Uh -oh. Yeah, it does. I'm gonna play Smoke Bomb. So that's costing me ten aura. Woo. Bring me down to sixty-four. And how many cards off the top of my deck? So I'm a fighter as well, so I get one reduction. So I'm discarding two cards off the top of my deck. Okay. What Smoke Bomb does is it allows me to move to one of the two spots within Smoke Bomb's awareness. So I'm going to move back here. This mm. will trigger the Inferno Pits, which will hit me for two. But now Death Eater's attack will fail because I'm no longer within Death Eater's awareness. Makes sense. So I just... You know, ninja my way out of it, basically. Into an Inferno pit, which stays there? <laughs> Does that stay there? Yes, yeah. Okay. It's now a piece of terrain. Like, it has six health. I can attack it and try to destroy it, but it's just a piece of terrain now. And you only take damage on the turn that you move into it, or every turn that you're on it do you take damage because you're still in the Inferno pits? No, just the turn I move mm. on to it. Cool. Uh, all right, so I'm in this Gosh, situation. I love this. This is cool. <laughs> I need to create some distance. I just like I I'm getting decimated. <laughs> this is That's what I like bad. about it. If I was losing, um, I would hate it. <laughs> so I'm gonna drop a wall between us. Okay. So I'm gonna pay eight aura, putting me down to fifty six. This is just a wall. It has eight health. Things cannot move onto it. That's all it does. Cool. So it's just blocking your way. Uh, and then being the archer that I am, I am going to I'm actually gonna shoot at this Death Eater. Okay. For two. Now, could you shoot so, over this wall? I could. Okay. So there is no line of sight on obstacles, or no, mm -hmm. there's no blocking obstacles. Cool. Yeah. So this is the point of having the dice. So we're just gonna drop a dice on the Death Eater with two health remaining. Okay. Yeah, I have so, no, I have now, no, no, nothing to play there. <laughs> now it goes over to Malik's turn. Okay. So Malik can only move this way. He can't move over the wall. He could attack the wall for four. He can't move diagonal. There's something blocking him here. Am I able to move there and push that? Or this spot is not occupiable? It, since the fire comes there, you cannot move on to that spot. Gotcha. Okay. So my only option would be to move here and then here and try to get around there. Instead, I'm going to attack the wall. You could just rotate towards the fire cub and attack it. Oh, that's a... It's exerted, right? That's so a much better it, idea. It's defenseless. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was so focused on your hero. Well, I don't know. <laughs> in an aggro strategy, do I care about the fire hub? It's an obstacle in your way. Might as well get it up, right? Okay. Because, yeah. But so is the wall. This, the wall is a literal obstacle in my way. That's fair. Um, so my thinking here is if you take out the fire cub, that's one less turn I have each round. So when you think about turn economy, you have now the advantage there. Mm, okay. And then the second part to it is uh, if you don't take it out, it's just going to keep attacking you for two and keep on pestering you. Okay. Uh, wait. So we're not in the main phase yet. We are in the move. Yeah. So all no, you've no. done so far is one rotate. So gotcha. you can choose to either do a second rotate or move or go into your main phase. Now, uh, there's another thing you can do. I usually explain this in round three, but it might be advantageous here. Uh, so there's two keywords, move and place. When you go to move to a spot, you can only move to a spot that's unoccupied. So there's no champion or no summon there. But if an ability says place, like the beckon ability, it doesn't care if a spot's occupied or not. So what you can do is stay facing towards me and just drop the behemoth on top of the wall. Oh, yeah, I definitely want to do that. And now the behemoth's on the wall. Next turn, it can just move off the wall and start chasing me down. Yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. That's okay. the aggro strategy. All right, so Beckon costs me 20. So that puts me at 48. I'm going to put the behemoth. I'll put it right there on top of the wall. Um, now, depending on how aggressive you want to be, you can also drop the gray wolf on top of the behemoth as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in, baby. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. Do this. Uh, now I can then rotate and attack or not. I've used my 
So you, because you started playing things, that puts you into your main phase, meaning you've skipped your move phase. Gotcha. Could but I? That's okay. Could could I have rotated, attacked, and then rotated back, and then played that? No. So once you, uh, so the while you're in your move phase, the only thing you can be doing is moving. So the moment you do anything else besides moving, you're yeah um, gotcha makes sense implicitly saying that you're ending your move phase yep all right that's my turn then uh you can still attack the wall for two without taking any damage to yourself yeah so that's that. all right so the wall that's gonna because go that's to... a, that's because that's a swift ability uh well the only cost to the basic attack two is exert and you're going to exert yourself anyways to end your turn gotcha yeah all right, so that puts the wall down to six. Uh, these summons technically have exert tokens on them, but there's no reason to put them on because we're just going to take them off again. Right. So let's take these things off and draw a card. All right. How badly do I run myself into a corner? That again i'm just debating on how uh, badly <laughs> do i run myself into a corner gotcha. <laughs> i'm a little bit trapped here um you didn't know i was gonna... so good at genesis did you <laughs> uh, that leap at the beginning of the game really hurt me yeah so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move once here and i'm gonna move a second time skipping my main phase going to my end phase but during my end phase i can still play swift ability so i can still move twice and attack so I'm going to move here and attack this Death Eater for two. Cool, because you can do diagonal, because that's your thing on the top. That's cool. I'm an archer. All right. So <laughs> De Death Eater already has two, and it only had four life. And there's yes. nothing that I can do in response there, because I am facing this way. So Death Eater dies. The most you can have Death Eater do before it dies is attack the wall for three. Oh, because that's a swift ability. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. And that doesn't cost me anything other than exerting. Yep. Okay. Correct. All right. So then Death Eater dies. Does that go into subconscious or memories? Memories. Memories. Okay. Okay. All right. Now it goes over to your team. Who do you want to operate first? Grey Wolf, Behemoth, or Malik? Um. So I feel like. These guys can move one space at a time, right? Well, so they can move. They have the same move phase as the champion does. So technically they can move twice and still attack because they still have their, their attack at swift speed. Ah, uh, gotcha. So I could go like this with the gray wolf and with the... So you, you'll just pick one unit because I still have my fire cup. So after you choose who you go with, then it'll go over to my fire cup's turn. Yeah. Okay. You want to go with Grey Wolf first? Uh, no, I don't. I want to go with the, the, behemoth? Be the Behemoth first. So I'm going to move twice over here. All right. And then you move twice and then you attack. I so do my swift. Act this is where I do my swift action now, huh? Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I will exert. Yep. And that hits me for five, which puts me down to eight. Uh, fucking. Uh,. Fire Cub's going to move here and swing at your Grey Wolf. Uh, so my so, Fire Cub's going to attack the Grey Wolf for two. So it was a mistake to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now I can't rotate in Swift. All I could do is Swift, which would do, which would attack the Inferno Pits or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just dead here, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. So now the question is, does Malik, you know, try to uh, take out the Fire Cub or does malik come after Ron. malik does not care about that fire club he's gonna move <laughs> uh he can't you see how much i'm trying to push you towards a fire club i'm like this is yeah. the only way i'm gonna win so <laughs> he, I just he's <laughs> he's here so he can move one two that's it right that's as close as i can get yeah. correct yeah okay so he'll move there. oops uh he'll move there now can i there's no sense in me rotating or anything uh would it make sense to rotate towards the fire club? Just so if you attacked me, I could, if you got to me somehow next turn, I could attack back. 
Fire Cub can at most move two spots, so it's either going up here. It won't go down here because if it steps on the Inferno Pits, it dies. Right. So it's coming up here uh, next round. That's the furthest it can reach. Okay. You could, if you don't want to waste your attack by just ending your turn, you could face the wall and hit it for two. But it comes down to how much is this wall a nuisance to you? Well, it's kind of protecting me here. You. It's kind of protect <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of protecting me here from the fire cup. So, okay. So you probably want to just stay where you are and don't turn your back towards me, right? That's yeah. the last thing you want to do. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. So that would end your turn. Everything's exerted. We go into the next round. Uh, we'll take this exert token. So draw a card for new round. All right, so I'm going to start by Could I have right, I wait could I have played a uh, card here last turn So since you moved twice no. you skipped your main phase gotcha gotcha so. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So yes. I'm gonna gotcha. rotate here and I'm gonna attack your behemoth for two damage Okay, and then I can swift here, right? Correct. Uh, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to respond to your swift. So right now the stack is Raha's attack. I'm just going to build a stack out over here so we can see it. Raha's attack. Then we got the behemoth's attack on top of the stack. And then I'm going to play this card called Gust. Okay. That costs 12, which brings me down to 44 aura. What Gus is going to do is deal two damage. If that damage is successful, it pushes the target one spot away from me. In which case, this will then resolve and it won't be able to do anything. Correct. Mm. But since I'm an archer, you would still be within my awareness. So my base attack that I'm doing against you will still go through. That is so cool. <laughs> Gosh, that's <laughs> so cool. Have... <laughs> that's good design, dude. That's cool. Okay, so there's nothing I can do to prevent that, right? Uh so it comes down to is there anything in Malik's hand that could really help you prevent that? Uh, and I no, can't, so I can't some, creatures. yeah, I can't, so, I couldn't beckon something behind him or something like that, right? So no, no. okay. Yeah. So Gus goes off, which pushes him back. He tries to attack, but that fails because I'm now too far away. But my attack goes off, which hits him for two. Beautiful. So he takes the total of four damage. I got a dice here. So he's at one health remaining. Okay. And is exerted because he tried to do his attack. Idiot. That, so that stupid <laughs> behemoth was like still trying to wail away. Okay. So now it, it's. Yeah. It comes down to Malik's turn now. All right. So Malik is going to. Uh, I don't want to get pushed back into this inferno pit. Uh, well, since I'm facing this direction. I can only play Gust in this direction. Gotcha. So if you look at okay. Gust's awareness, gotcha. it's only the spot in front of me. Makes sense. All right. So I will move and rotate. Now, if I rotate, is that two moves? No. So you get one move and one rotate as like a package deal. Okay. Now, uh, uh, where's my little thing here? I can now play as many abilities as I want. And one of those abilities is playing cards, right? Or what, when does the attack happen? If I so the attack happens anytime, but if you do your attack right now because it costs exert, exert also ends your turn. So if you do your attack right now, you wouldn't be able to bring out more creatures. Unless I did so a swift. Oh no, that exerts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so it's better to bring out your creatures and then do your attack. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna bring out fire attack two base attack three yeah i'm gonna beckon jalarian hound here now can i rotate this already it will come out facing the same direction as you perfect okay uh and now that cost me oops that cost me uh nine right yeah So I'm at 37 or 30 typical Louis with math 39 39 <laughs> all right and then um I can't summon anything else because if I did I would summon it here 
So remember, you can beckon things on top of other things. So you can drop a creature right on top of me if you want. That is or on top so of the delaying cool. hand. Cool. Gosh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, I'm throwing an infernal ghoul right on top of you because that seems like cool. <laughs> uh, that seems like cool lore. Okay, uh, so that costs me six. Okay, uh, and then I can attack now. Yes. All right, so I will heavy attack to take two life and attack you for four. All right, that brings me down to four. <laughs> um, my fire cub will come up here. That's all I can do. And that's the end of round. So we go into the next round, take these counters off, and draw a card. All right. Is there any way I can survive this? <laughs> I think I'm checkmated. Hey! Because uh, you, um, you can't move here, right? Because I'm there. Yeah. And you can move here. Uh, oh, that's cool. So my only spot is I can move here, but this can attack me, and then this can attack me. I have a smoke bomb to be able to get out of an attack, but it's just going to leave me in a position that I'll just end up dying anyways. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I, I don't have any responses. <laughs> So the most I can do here is go out by attacking the behemoth for two and at least take that out. <laughs> cool. So you swing at the behemoth for two and that's a range attack that's swift. So no, I don't get any responses, right? I'm, I'm too far. I'm too yeah, far gotcha. for okay. the behemoth. Yeah. So that dies, goes to your memories and then it goes over to you. How do you want to finish me off? Uh, definitely with my hero. Right, yeah, without this in, without this in my hand i don't want to cheat uh, <laughs> okay so my hero then will heavy attack and i will exert too yeah. and that's game i'm down to zero hey so cool so uh walk me through the strategy of what went right and wrong for you you said my early move where i got super close to you was a win yeah so there were a few things that worked in your favor. One was you came in really close to me really early on and I had no evasion right away. And the other thing that helped you was dropping the Inferno Pits right behind me. So now if I decided to run, I was taking damage. Yeah. So it was always in a lose-lose state. You just put on the pressure really early on and just kept it going. That's what we do, baby. Uh, and uh, and Roha, you can't, uh, they can't see it right now. Let me move it over. Raha only has 22 health, and I kind of saw that early, and I was like, I'm going to just go for it, because I have eight more health than Raha, and that seems like a lot when you only have 22. Um, interesting. Yeah. This deck, Raha's deck is designed a lot more to be techy and agile and keep distance, and that was the thing. Like, I had the walls. If I had earlier, early on stayed back and put up a wall between us, then it would have been a lot harder for you to get in close like that. But definitely one of the things, if I were to redo it, I wouldn't have made that first step forward, right? Right. Because that just left me exposed. Uh, I did that mainly for tutorial reasons to show you how movement and beckoning work. I love uh, it. <laughs> uh, I appreciate but... it. I... <laughs> Uh, it's super cool the way it's so I, I've been watching some of Jordan's videos and just his deck techs and you know not knowing exactly how it plays but seeing how he does things and I love the um, there's a deck there that he put out that uh, basically traps people like the goal of the deck is to like trap them and like that kind of thing really I think brings up some really cool gameplay thing where like you can have different strategies and uh, yeah is it's super cool like the grid adds another dynamic to the game that is just amazing um and i love uh, i love that you've captured a i love that you've captured a um like a miniature feel without using miniatures that's really cool um yeah a big thing about it was like having a focus on what's in your hand has always been a staple of collectible card games and it's something i love but having this opportunity to also focus on the board state and have that matter like the direction and distance uh so like what you did near the end there where you came in from my side to attack compared to coming in from my front there's so many cards that can defend the spot right in front of you so if your opponent comes and attacks your flank you're really exposed uh 
it adds another level to how you approach combat that I just I really loved. I love that from Warhammer and I really wanted to bring that into Genesis. That's super cool, man. I had a blast and I hope that this gives people a just like a first hand experience of how to play. Uh, I said this in the intro, you, you might not have heard it. We did have a few returns, just people who uh, wrong shipments and addresses and then they didn't want to pay for shipping again and things. So we do have a few bundles left and uh, I think it's really a great way to learn how to play. You've got the two player starter kit, right? Um, that is, is that is one of the, one of them is Raha, right? Yeah. Is the other one this guy? Uh it's uh the mage yeah. character from a uh, malik city cool so it's the same color combination but it's playing as a mage so you have raha playing as just a really agile archer and you have idris a malik's partner playing as a uh blitz summoner so she's all about speed and putting on the pressure that's super cool uh so i think it's a great way to play and then it, people can learn this on tabletop simulator right and it's free yeah, every right. Sunday night, the community uh, on the fan Discord server, uh, they have demo nights every Sunday night where the community teaches new players uh, the strategies to the game. So cool! Let's that's get always available. Let's make sure you get that link to me too, and we'll put that in the um, in the in the uh, the comment section as well. So if people want to hop on Tabletop Simulator and learn, I think that's a really cool way to do it. Uh, I love how simple the card design is and how much it leaves the interaction and gameplay to like create the ability like you don't have a ton of mechanics like the mechanics are simple you're attacking for five dark damage i don't know if there's a difference between dark and light i mean maybe there's other things but like uh i love that it's like simple but like it seems like the the strategy behind it is what makes it more strategic so really cool dude thank you thank you um, I'm looking, and I'm looking forward to playing more. Promos from you still? Yes. People can still get those. Yes. Promos? Yeah, 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 yeah. They can. Uh, this <laughs> is super cool. The long <laughs> promo. Uh, super cool, and it's George in my backwards hat, uh, <laughs> and it's got the compete sports and the kitchen table TCG logo on it. Pretty cool, and um, sweet. Asad, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for teaching me how to play, and uh, I think we'll see some more Genesis stuff coming up. As I explore this a little bit more, uh, I've been trying to get my buddy over to, to play some actual physical game. Um, like I said, I'm not a pro at Tabletop Simulator, although I do like it every time I use it. I don't know why I don't lean into that more, but uh, I just like physical stuff too. So uh, hopefully we can get some more uh, gameplay content out there. And uh, I don't know that I'll be doing deck techs. I don't know that I, I have the capacity, to, but I'll steal Jordan's deck techs and tell people about that. Uh, so... <laughs> Cool, man. I appreciate you. Anything else you want to say to the people before we sign it off? Uh, no, just keep following us. And uh, we have really cool announcements of the upcoming championship soon. So if that's something you're interested in, getting into the game and playing it competitively, that's going to be rolling out very, very soon. Awesome. Good work, man. Thank you so much. Thank and you. the rest of you guys, remember to be kind to the people around you. And we'll see you again next video.